Hello, I'm Vince White. I'm an employment attorney. And today we're talking about how to prepare for your mediation. And this is an important topic because a lot of people out there, um, they seem to think, oh, I'll go to my mediation without an attorney, see what I get. If I don't like what I get, I'll hire an attorney. That's not a great tactic uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, on the upside, you could save yourself on attorney's fees, which is great, right? On the downside, um, one of two things is super likely to happen. One, you could get fleeced. You could settle your case for a fraction of what it's worth and end up with pennies on the dollar and never even know, just go out, go through your life, live in your life, never knowing you gave away 90%, 95%, 98% of the value of your claim, right? Certainly possible. The other thing that I see happen, and this happens a lot, as people come into mediation, they might have a claim that's worth, you know, and, and it's hard to value claims, right? I've got a lot of videos on this channel about how to value claims. So I'm not going to get into how to value your claims. You can watch those videos. But a lot of people just decide on a number, right? Especially when they're not represented. So they might say, you know, I don't know what my claim is worth, but I'd sure love $70 million. What? What? Is that, is that how you sell a car? Do you sell a car based on what you want, not what it's worth? Not how you sell a car, not how you settle a claim. Nonsense. You're playing nonsense games, right? So what they do with that 70 million is they look like a fool. They shut down communication. The other side is going to offer you like nothing. Very, very small amounts because they're going to think you're absurd. You're being a jerk and you're, you're not making any sense. And your mediation is going to break down. You're going to get nothing. That's okay. You don't have to settle your case at mediation, right? But it's not a good result. It's not a good result to be grinding mediation to a halt and burning up attorney hours and causing your employer to spend a lot of money on attorneys when they're trying to give you money, right? I, I always think that like an employer that's trying to give you money was, as an attorney, it's my job to listen. And you might be frustrated. You might, oh, they're only offering me X amount of dollars and I, it's not anywhere near enough. I want three times X. Okay, that's fine. But if they're going to tell me about how they want to give you X amount of dollars today, next time I talk to them, I get to say, hey, why are you wasting my time? You already offered me X. You already know it's not enough. Come on. We got to go up here, buddy. If we're not going up, what are we talking about? Right? And that's important, right? These conversations conversations about your employer giving you money to make up for what they did are valuable conversations even if they don't result in a settlement i cannot stress that enough never get angry about people talking about giving you money to make you whole you can get frustrated you can say they're not giving me enough they're being ridiculous they're being absurd yes i'm sure that's all true the employer is always going to start with a positional offer right or or if they make any offer at all, right? But a lot of times they'll, they'll open with something that's deeply insulting. I don't know how many times I've seen an employer open with 2,000, 2,500, 5,000 on a claim that will ultimately go for hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? Are they doing that because they think they're gonna get away with it? No, they're doing that as a positional move to try to ultimately reach a goal at the end of, at the end of settlement negotiations that they can stomach, that they can afford, right? And I agree with you. What they think they can afford is not what they can afford. They need to pay more than what they think they can afford if that's what your claim is worth. And again, check out my videos about value and claim to kind of get a feel for what your claim might be worth. And especially, especially if you're gonna represent yourself at mediation, you need to watch those videos so you have an idea of what you're actually do here, right? Because if you go in and just make up a number that you want, you're wasting your time, you're wasting mediator's time, you're wasting your employer's attorney's time. Not that you care about the employer's attorney, they're getting paid hourly, hundreds, if not thousands of dollars an hour. But that being said, it's not a good look and it's not a strategy that's really well suited to getting you paid. So let me stress that. Okay, so right out of the gate, I'm obviously an attorney, so I'm gonna think you need an attorney, you should have an attorney for mediation, right? That's the first thing I'm gonna say about getting ready for mediation. Let's assume you have an attorney, right? Because if you don't have an attorney, you're basically just, you're going to think through, you're going to watch those valuation videos, you're going to get a feel for what your claim might be worth, 
and you're going to go in with some kind of plan about how you're going to start a little high and you're going to fight to get down to what, you know, get get a settlement that's actually at the amount that you're due. But if you have counsel, there's a lot more you can do to prepare, right? First off, they're going to be putting together all the statements. They're going to be presenting at the mediation. You're not going to have to do any of that. That's not such a big deal. It's not like speaking for yourself for most people is that hard but appearances matter substance you know you're whatever you say is going to be substantial and it's meaningful and true I, I i presume but if you can put the bells and whistles on it if you can dress it up if you can make it more persuasive more impactful that's going to carry weight in a mediation what the defense counsel is doing is sitting there saying uh, how much how much exposure how much risk is my client facing right um, could they win an easy victory here and end up paying nothing or are they faced with giant risks and, the, and a big potential payout if I don't settle this and the more polished and the more impactful and persuasive you and your attorneys are at mediation the more defense counsel is going to say I don't know about this one uh, maybe I better maybe I better cut a deal before I look like a fool, right? So that's gonna be something that the attorney's gonna take for you. Then what the attorneys have to do with you before the mediation is go through, do a damages calculation, and then also go through, okay, this is what you might hope to win. This is your damages calculation. Now, we can't assign a probability to whether a case will win or lose, but we can say to ourselves, boy, if we run this trial 10 times, do we think it might win more than five times? Do we think it might win once in a while? And and then you need to look at that. You need to say, okay, all right. So if I got this trial and I think I win about half the time and I'm due X amount of dollars, but I only win half the time if I gamble everything to win, oh boy, should I settle? How much should I settle for? Well, if you really believe that, you believe, you believe you're only going to win about half the time if you run this trial over and over and over again, then that's, that's a lot of risk, right? Going forward to trial is embracing a lot of risk. So then you need to have a very serious conversation with your counsel as to what is your appetite for risk? What is a bird in the hand worth to you, right? What is a settlement, a sure thing worth to you? Especially, and this is key, a settlement now as opposed to a trial that could be nine months, two years, five years from now. And federal courts are getting a lot faster, right? State courts, not so much, but federal courts and certain agencies, they do move a lot quicker. And certainly arbitration is very, very quick. So, you know, I don't want to make too big a deal out of this, right? I mean, getting a trial within 18 months of mediation is certainly possible. But even then, what's a sure thing now worth to you versus uh, maybe 18 months from now? That's a real question, right? I mean, what could you do with that money now? How could that change your life now? Versus what is the chance of a little bit more money 18 months from now? And I'm not telling you, the way I'm saying it almost makes it sound like I think embracing risk is a bad idea. I do not. In fact, I really applaud every one of our clients that embraces the risk of trial. It's amazing for us because we get a crack at winning you more. And when we win you more, we make more. That's amazing for me, right? And I get to do this, in terms of my firm, hundreds of times a year. So in aggregate, because I think we're pretty good at what we do, it works out for us. Now here's the thing though, any employment claim can be lost. The best possible employment case, the most amazing sexual harassment claim, the most highest value and easiest to prove workplace discrimination case, it can lose. There are no sure things in employment law. So a lot of clients come to the termination. You know, I do have some appetite for risk, but my appetite for risk is not as high as Vince's because Vince gets to do this all the time and I only get one of these, right? That's important. You have to know that about yourself. You need to really search your soul and say, hey, you know, am I... Am I the gambler here? Do I duke it out no matter what? Are my principles the most important thing to me? And I'm not hitting anyone. I'm not being negative about anyone 
who takes a settlement rather than fighting it out. I'm just saying you got to know. You got to know what you want, right? I've, I've sat with a lot of people who didn't get what they wanted at trial. Or worse, won their trial and won less than they could have had in settlement. It happens. It's tragic. It's worse than losing sometimes. Because really what the jury is saying is, yeah, we believe you. We believe all this happened. We believe you were wronged. We just don't think it's as big a deal as you think it is. I bet you that feels real bad. That does not make you feel whole, I suspect. It does not make you say, oh, I'm glad I had my day in court. In my experience, my clients who experience that, they're not happy campers. They do not feel vindicated. They feel, I suspect, a little foolish, which is not great, right? So these are all things you need to talk about. This is something you need to have a variety of conversations about in the weeks, weeks plural, leading up to your mediation, right? Um, if, you're, if your attorney's calling you the night before mediation and tries to do this in 20 minutes, whoa, whoa, red, red alert, right? What are we doing here? Why are you not taking this seriously? This mediation is a vastly meaningful moment for my life as a client, for my case. Why are you shoving my prep into 20 minutes did, did you even do a damages calculation that should take almost an hour sometimes and and why aren't we digging into what in my inner being as a human being i need out of this out of this day tomorrow what i need to feel that i've been made whole that that is the meaningful thing that you really need to explore with your attorneys before mediation right and honestly your gut the first thing that jumped to your mind when you, when you heard me say that, yeah, I don't know if that's going to be the thing that you actually end up saying is the most important thing to you, right? There are so many people who say, I would never settle my case, fight it to the end, want my day in the court no matter what. Give it a week. You might be one of the ones that still feels that way. Many do not. Many do not. Many do not have the risk for appetite that they think they have. Many do not have the stomach for a protracted fight. And it's no knock on any of these people. I'm just saying long-term litigation, conflict-oriented, knock-down, drag-out, murder, blood-in-the-streets litigation, it's not for everybody. People in this industry, we chose it. We had such high appetite for conflict and such low social skills that we were fine with just fighting with people every single day. It's comfortable for us. Is it comfortable for you? Good chance it's not. You need to know this about yourself. You need to have these conversations, have these thoughts before you're in mediation making life-changing decisions about your case. I hope this helps. I hope it at least jogs some ideas. I think some folks might not like what I have to say a little bit, right? I mean, there's always frustration when I, you know, give my thoughts on an evaluation of a claim or someone's appetite for risk, a lot of people will be like, no, it's worth 30 billion and you're wrong. I'll win 100% of the time. Cool. Yeah, you can think that. You have no basis to think that. You have no experience in this field. You've never run an employment case before. In fact, you don't know anything about anything in terms of what's going on here. But that being said, it's your case. You're the shot caller. You make the decisions. You don't have to settle if you don't want to. Oh, that's the last thing. I never, ever want to hear an attorney say to their client, you got to take the settlement or else. Ah, Mr. Attorney, Miss Attorney, I thought you worked for the client. I don't think you can tell them. to. They, they can tell you, hey, you better take the settlement because you know this, this piece of evidence over here is real bad for you and you got a lot of risk in this case. They can't tell you you have to take the settlement. That's a really key difference. They can tell you, listen, I think you're being real foolish here. That's fine. That's a valuable conversation. I would actually say, if the attorney's making legitimate arguments to you that, that you grasp and you think matter as to why you should settle your case, it doesn't mean you have to settle your case, but I think you should listen. But they can never say to you, settle your case or else. Or, hey, I settle your case for an amount that you didn't agree to yet. What? You can't do that. 
that's not how this works. Unless unless you're giving this attorney a, attorney authority to settle the case for you with some specificity, right? They can't just go settle your case. Without authority from you, the attorney can talk about settling the case, but they can't make a demand without your authority. They can't accept an offer without your authority. This is key. And this is something, there's a lot of bad attorneys in the world. This is something I see out of some of the worst, where they're just like, hey, settle your case. Here's 20 grand, get out of here. Made their, made their you know, eight grand in two hours. Was that what your case is worth? Or did they just settle it for that because it was a quick flip and they made quick money? They probably ended up making about four grand an hour on that one. You know, see, they can't do that to you, nor can they make you agree to something. Now, if you do agree to something, they can make you, they can make you hold to what you agreed to, right? There's, if you, if you have offered an acceptance and there's a settlement agreement here, they're, they're not going to be able to the next day. You, you can't settle your case and 24 hours from now say, hey, I know we settled yesterday, but I'd like 30 more. Uh, my friend, you settled your case. That case is done. It is not easy to revoke a settlement. Um, what is going on here, Right. And you need to know all of these things before this mediation. You need to know that what you say in the mediation matters, what you agree to in the mediation matters. Um, at this point, I am rambling. I've been rambling for 17 minutes. If this was helpful, consider liking and subscribing. It really helps me to help more people. And if you have follow-up comments, comments, questions, I feel like there's a lot that could be said about this. And there's a lot of people who are going to disagree with me. Comment below. I will track the comments. I'll try to make follow-up comments or follow-up videos to explain things further. Um, I've said way too much here. This is a 17-minute video, and that is way too long for YouTube.